We're gonna take South Channel, right? Yeah. Okay, so South Channel, and then like the attack is gonna be pretty blind easy about what's happening. Well, it's gonna be should be like a zero run out to roll it up, beat out the South Channel. Out of here in a northern. I mean, maybe a kite, maybe not. I don't know. And then zero. I, I think we just have to make it up as we go. Um, we've been talking, and uh, down once we get, uh, it's going to be a, kind of a dogfight. I think there's going to be a really maybe ten boats surrounding that uh, bar to get to light at the same time. Um, but we have a little plan that uh, if the breeze is ten knots or less, uh, we're going to just be lined straight for Block Island. Um, if the breeze is ten knots or more, there's supposed to be more breeze offshore, so we may put a little east into that. start of this leg. Uh, GDF Suez is far ahead, definitely did the best job with this start. Bodacious Dream and Griffin Solo, who were third and fourth respectively in the first leg, are, uh, are right there with GDF Suez. A little worried about Bodacious here. What? No, we're not doing this all the way. Go away. Go to stand with somebody else. No, you have other friends, Rob. No, I don't. Careful, with someone else. What? Nobody likes me, Ben. It's true. right now, maybe uh, a couple miles off the beach, and um, wind has dropped considerably in the last five minutes. Got about three knots of breeze, and you can feel the boat is tossing us around. And every other boat, with the exception of one, is up above us, out to sea a little bit further to the east. We like where we're at. We think it's a good place, um, and uh, we're on with the competition, which is pretty nice. Great. That's about where we're at. No. Well, yeah, we're losing Dragon, but there's nothing we can do about Dragon. They're like, they're making up their own game. Hanging out with Snooky. And the situation. The situation. <laughs> That's the guy's name, right? That is the guy's name. See, I, I learn everything I know from South Park. All my, everything I know about popular American culture comes from South Park. Because it's free online. Okay, we've been racing for four hours now. Uh, we're just uh, a few miles ago escaped to uh, New York Harbor. It's pretty nice. We're in sight of everyone. Our next mark is, uh, let me tell you, oh, what's it from here anyway? It's probably about 40 to 50 miles from here. 40, I'd say 40 odd miles from here south. Uh, Barnegat in the right. So the fleet is mainly um, packed all behind us just now, but really not very far at all. Very light conditions, very tricky. It's all about keeping the boat speed up, keeping the boat moving. Uh, now we are taking back our third place. Before we had a little bit of a um, two bad technical moves. We were in nearly first place when we went out of New York Harbor. Uh, then we went first too far to the uh, to the left, and then too far to the right. So we lost a little bit uh, our game plan, which was not good. So we, we dropped to six or something like that, and now we are back to third place. We tried to uh, reach the mark in second place. I don't think that we can catch Alvart uh, before the mark. Uh, the general plan is to go offshore uh, first and get a right hand shift, and then take my port. Once we left New York. You know, we wanted to stay out in the ocean a little bit early on, but then near the last 10 miles or so, I wanted to stay right, closer to land. But that didn't, you know, we, we made three sail changes pretty quickly, and that pushed us out to the left. And we didn't realize as much that there was a knot and a half of current, so we ended up sailing a little bit beyond the mark and came around. And I was awful surprised when Campaign de France and Mara came around the mark, and they went straight up the shoreline. And I just turned up and said, we're going, we're going right and we're not going to stop until the last boat tacks and then we're going to wait another hour and then we're going to tack. And then we got lucky enough to lay a, 
110 mile ley line, which you can't imagine, you know, and you know, just clearing Block Island. It was, it was a game plan that I've had for uh, two or three days at least. Uh, because they have to go upwind here with a lot of current 
um, that couldn't be any good. So the big question is, is this video, um, bodacious view in front of us? We got 11 knots of breeze and we're doing 7 to change. We're trying to keep Bureau of Veritas uh, in check. So we need to stay in front of them, so we're going to cross them and try to come around Point Judith and get up into the bay going towards Newport. A couple more attacks and a couple more <laughs> hours, but uh, we're getting there. Stream. This is the Atlantic Cup Race Committee just uh, giving you guys your official finish time of 011134 and congratulations. Welcome to Newport. It's awesome to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, it's spectacular. It's unbelievable. You know, with the competition out here and to be able to pull this off in the second race for the boat, can't ask for better. What started out as a straight line tack in turned into a real mess for the last three or four miles and then to start hearing the other two boats right behind us. Matt was picking the other two boats out. I went down for a couple hours, he went down for a couple hours to just recharge the batteries to this last little bit. Because we knew it was going to be tough getting in here. We could tell it was going to be an outgoing tide. And, you know, when the wind gets light, and, you know, it was going to be stressful, but it paid out. We are really happy that we uh, finished second. We had a good race. Uh, we missed first place uh, because we were a little bit too conservative. We stayed with the fleet. We, we knew um, the right side would be better, but we wouldn't go as far as Predacious Stream went. Inside, uh, between uh, Long Island and Block Island, no, never. Never. Because that, that couldn't work. It's impossible that that could work. I mean, uh, I don't know how, how that should work, but uh, with that wind direction and that current, uh, you have to be uh, believe a lot in, uh, in God, or you have to be crazy, or you have to uh, go to the casino a lot. Just before Newport, we catch the um, lobster pop, which wasn't really helpful, um, saving our second place. And so the uh, last three miles up the river were really, really stressful for us. Uh, and But we did a really good job at the end to come back and take the second place. And uh, that's why we are really happy for that. We, are, we arrived with a, quite a big lead at the first mile. Then after, we, we were not able to see where was the other boat. And because we don't receive very often some position, we have done a really bad navigation after the, the first mile. And we are very, very lucky to finish uh, third. I think we finished third because Mionda has done a really good navigation. I had to argue for quite a long time for my gamble to be accepted and it paid off but we only knew that it paid off probably an hour before the finish. So we were, we were fully expecting to have Icarus uh, Initiative and, uh, and uh, Real Veritas in front of us. Could you, uh, could you define SZA for the race committee, please? <laughs> Icarus, this is the race committee. Welcome to Newport, boys. Your uh, official finish time was 0209.33. Yes, I really wrote that down. Thank you very much, race committee. Uh, we will be heading to the shipyard, standing by with cold taps in our hands. Uh, I think we made some good moves on the way out of New York Harbor when going downwind with the kite. But then when we got through the Verrazanos, it just shut off. So everything, everyone kind of collected again and then had to redo everything again. So it was like a restart, which happened again. Uh, where, were we, where were we in March? Fourth, fifth, something like that? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. There were a lot of boats though at the turning mark. Boats are going this crowded. way, boats are going that way. And we're like, what in the hell? But that's pretty much where the tactical decision was made for the whole race. Certain boats went back up the coast, so we turned the mark and it was less than 50 degrees on the compass, so we stayed and a couple of the boats went with us and we knew that they were getting information about weather, because we don't get that. 
and we knew they were getting position reports, so we figured if we stay with them, when they make the decision to tack, we're gonna tack. So we went all the way to the corner, and we were, we were the second to last boat to tack, uh, turns out we should have been the last boat to attack. Because the last boat to attack <laughs> was bodacious, and they won. We left New York. We were second under the bridge. That, that was, was kind of nice. cool, nice. And, and then, then the breeze died, and we slatted down the Jersey coast to an unnecessary mark. <laughs> and then we went offshore and sailed up wind. And we were doing we did good, and we made it all the way up to second place, and we were we and were it rocking raining. it. We had the boat going pretty fast upwind. That was nice. And then we came in to shore in at Montauk, and suddenly we were crossing Mare and Campagne de France, which was nice. Feeling pretty good. But then we went. Pretty good. Then uh, we went inside Block Island, which was the wrong choice. We got. F yeah. I. The, the tide, I had the tides all lined up and you know the tide at Montauk was going to be high and then it was going to start washing out of Long Island Sound and it just didn't, we lost the breeze is really what happened. I think we did have a little tide push but we didn't have any wind behind Block Island and they were going like two-ish knots faster than we were. So, you know, it's sailing. Uh, he doesn't need an ambulance. He can stand up and walk. Uh, I think he might have like a slip disc or something. I drove the boat uh, and the healing was very uh, high. And at the moment with, uh, with the waves, the healing increased. And I tried to, to catch the uh, winch under, but this one um, moved from the winch and then I fall from the hops on the cockpit to, uh, to the back and because the beam of the boat is 40 meters uh, and a half, uh, it's a very uh, long jump and, and I fall into my, my back in the corner of the cockpit so it was very painful and during uh, 10 hours I was very upset because uh, I couldn't really move and uh, after the, at the beginning of the night it was better and uh, it's a bummer to have something like that to happen, and uh, oh, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's sailboat racing; anything can happen out there. The protest is off because uh, my, my feeling was fine. My, my goal was not to, to, to obtain a penalty for murder. My, my, my goal was to obtain the change, the attitude, and the um, the ugly, uh, the turn of the light, <laughs> yes, etc., and they uh, confirm to be too much aggressive during the night and so we discuss about it and find an agreement and, and I know me personally and stiff on the same like, I have no intention of filing a protest. I don't want to have a protest here and that's not the spirit of this. Like we're just trying to go sailboat racing. Well I mean I know Stefan uh, since uh, two thousand eight. So we said Mini against each other and I, I was actually surprised that he protested us because it's, it's not his, his his kind of style. And <clears throat> Then we had a little, little bit of discussion together and we decided that uh, protesting would be stupid, it's just a waste of time and uh, we would like to stay good friends and so we decided to... Which I think is a really good move. 